Hello investors and welcome to another 180 Markets Weekly Wrap. And today friends, we'll talk about the end of last year, the beginning of this year, and hopefully what is in store. But before you do that, you know the drill, like, subscribe to our channel, we will promise to bring you content you will find nowhere else on the internet. That is right. And also, if you know anyone else that you think would be interested in this co content, please let us know. Now, as I mentioned, the end of last year, the financial year that is, and it really did end with a thud, many smaller companies especially going down 10, 15% in the last 30 days. But now we are at the beginning. That's right, the beginning of FY25. And certainly there are some shares that are no doubt depressed. And we already are starting to see the formations of some chart improvement, some balances, especially in sectors such as copper and even lithium yesterday. Now, it is way too early to call it the end of the downtrend, but certainly it is a good place to start. So on this holiday week in the Northern Hemisphere, it is good to see this action. It is good to see the new beginnings and certainly and hopefully we'll see some new capital enter back into the market. And now for placements, I'll always, I'll turn it over actually today to somebody special. Hi everyone, welcome to the weekly wrap. Happy new financial year. Uh, we're going to have a look at some placements this week and some movers. I'm replacing Sean, so hopefully you enjoy this week's weekly wrap. Let's jump right into the placements. Uh, I've just brought up the 180 Markets platform. As you can see, we are live on a few placements one that halted today is TOY, Toys R Us. Uh, they're raising $2.45 million at seven cents a share with a one for two attaching option. Something to note about this placement is the whole placement is subject to shareholder approval at the next EGM. We also have PNN that's live on the platform. They're raising $2 million at 14 cents a share. LNU, Linnaeus, they're raising 400,000 at, at 0.2 cents a share. And we do have a closed placement that was from yesterday. That was LRV. Uh, they're raising four to five million dollars at ten and a half cents a share. Now, something interesting about that placement is if you guys remember, they did raise, uh, I think it was in April this year, they raised at seven and a half cents. Um, then they did halt for some results and they had some very impressive gold results that came out of that. So um, if we just have a look at the chart here, they raised earlier in the year and in May they released their results, uh, which did lead the share price to hit a high of 13 cents after those gold results came out. So hopefully they are doing an up round. Hopefully there are some similar results post this round of capital raising. And um, yeah, well done to Canaccord and the joint lead managers there for doing an up round in this tough environment. Uh, we'll have a look at another placement that we actually were part of the cornerstone group for that was earlier this week, and that's RCE, Reese Pharmaceuticals. So Reese raised $8 million at 45 cents a share. And something notable about this raise was that North Star Impact Fund committed to approximately $2 million. Ord Minette were the lead manager and 180 Markets clients did participate over the weekend for an early cornerstone bid. The placement proceeds will be used to advance clinical trials for their R327 product and topical applications of R327G. They'll be doing a phase three clinical trial uh, in Indonesia and IND enabling activities. Reese now claims that they're fully funded through to FY 2026 and set for all their phase three clinical trials and topical applications in Southeast Asia. Following on from the placement, there will also be an SPP, uh, which is set to open shortly. So hopefully the share price does stay above 45 cents and they can raise that extra money. Another placement we'll take a look at was WAF. They raised $150 million this week at $1.37 per new share. Uh, we can see that the chart does look pretty positive for this company, West African Resources. Uh, this was a 9.1% discount to the 10-day VWAP. So the share price has fallen a little bit post-announcement of placement. However, it is still trading above the placement price. Euros Hartley's were the sole lead manager and proceeds from the placement will be primarily used to purchase owner mining fleet 
establish owner mining workshop facilities and purchase exploration drill rigs, utilising their mining pre-production capital uh, for their gold project. WAF are now fully funded through to gold production and the development of this project will support their aim to be a multi-project 420,000 ounce producer um, from 2025. So that's pretty impressive that they are fully funded now, hopefully uh, onwards and upwards for them. Next, we'll have a look at TVN, uh, Tyven. They raised on Monday $4.5 million in a placement at $0.6.5 cents a share with a one for two attaching option. The strike price of the option was $0.12 cents and they will expire in June 2027, so quite a long-dated option. And CLSA were the lead manager with Evolution being a co-manager. Um, now, share price is still above the placement price, which is very positive and funds are being used to progress their projects, including the Tyven Plus uh, technology and their vanadium electrolyte development work. Uh, they will also retire some debt and use the funds for general working capital. Now, today, uh, Tyven did release an announcement, which is excellent from the company, uh, releasing news quite quickly after the placement. And this shows some further high-grade surface mineralization discovered at one of their projects with Grades up to 23.8% lead returned from rock surface rock chip sampling. Uh, these are the highest grades to date, and their drill program is expected to commence in Q3 of 2024. So that would be a good one to keep an eye on. Some other notable raises this week are JLL. Now they raised $600,000 in a placement at 30 cents a share with Mercer Street Global investing $500,000. The company are looking to raise a total of $6.7 million. They're doing a rights issue as well to raise $3.1 million. And they will also have a convertible note out there. Uh, they have some long dated options and short dated options attached to the placement and rights issue. Uh, the short dated options will have a strike price of 40 cents and the long dated options will have a strike price of 60 cents. So let's hope uh, they can get back up there to bring in some more funding. Next, let's look at RIM Rimfire. They raised $1.15 million at 2.5 cents a share with a one for two free attaching option. And that's it for placements. Now let's move over to some ups and downs for the week. Um, we'll start with one that made their announcement this morning, Mal Malcolm Mines, M2M is the code. Today they announced some exceptional gold results uh, from their recent grade control RC drilling campaign at the Golden Crown Prospect. So we can see here on the chart that they have had an awesome run today. They've hit a high of five cents earlier today and a low of four cents, currently trading at 4.3 bid. They've traded $1.89 million and it's currently 11.30 in the morning, which is quite good for this company. You can see here that the volume is much higher um, than normal. Let's have a look at their announcement. Uh, so obviously one of the highlights is one meter at 111 grams per ton of gold, which includes six, me six meters at 36.75 grams per ton. Um, so very impressive there. Um, now they've also got their site preparation ongoing for the bulk sampling program and they're planning uh, drilling to follow up these results. M2M did raise capital recently. They did an SPP to raise just, or they raised just under a million dollars at two cents a share. So well done to everyone that participated in that SPP capital raising. Uh, you guys have done very well there. Let's take a look at Lindian, L-I-N. Uh, L-I-N, they announced on Monday their outstanding feasibility study results of their stage one development. Uh, of its rare earths project. Uh, this confirmed it is a technically low risk and economically robust project. They had quite a good run on Monday after that announcement. They hit a high of 15.5 cents a share and they have been holding pretty stable, currently trading at 13 and a half cents. Some of the highlights from the feasibility study included pre-production capital costs of US $40 million, which does include 12.5% contingency, making it one of the lowest capital cost rare earth projects under development. Uh, the stage one post-tax NPV of 
US $555 million, an IRR of 80% and an average annual EBITDA of US $84 million. This project is now fully permitted and supported by the Malawian government to commence construction and operations once the financing has been confirmed. And the board do claim that they are confident they will secure funding um, that minimizes dilution for shareholders. So good luck to the guys at Lindian. Uh, it does seem like things are progressing quite well there. Another mover this week that did have a nice run earlier was WTM. On Wednesday, they released some further high-grade gold results from their spur gold copper project drilling. Let's have a look at the results. It was shallow results. Uh, some highlights included 89 metres at 1.73 grams gold. Um, they also had, that included 57 metres at 2.5 grams per tonne gold. And they also did have some good copper, 0.32% um, and 0.38%. So they will now plan additional holes to follow up these results and further expand the drill program. They raised capital earlier in the year, I think it was in April, uh, $3 million at 10 cents a share. So obviously they're trading today at 27 and a half cents. It's an awesome result. On Wednesday, when they did put out that announcement, the volume was very high and they did hit highs of 29 and a half cents. So excellent for those people that did take in the placement um, and hopefully further results to come. Another one we'll take a look at today is AL3. Uh, this was a next investor's stock as well. They've had an awesome run the past couple of weeks. And on Tuesday, they announced a $1.1 million sale to the US Navy um, to support their laser welding solutions. So the purchase order included a one-year service and maintenance contract. And this system that they've sold can be used to supply metal 3D printed parts to the US Navy submarine industrial base, which is pretty interesting and seems to be a trend that is um, apparent in the market. AL3 will continue momentum with their US scale up and strategy, which underpins their investment that they're making in the US manufacturing hub and headquarters are in Ohio. They will look to maximize their opportunities across the US defense sector. So the company has just as early as last week, we're trading at just above 10 cents a share. Uh, now they're trading at 23 and a half cents a share. So an awesome result for shareholders and congratulations to the guys at AL3. We'll also talk about DRO, which follows along a similar theme, Drone Shield. Uh, Drone Shield have had an excellent run uh, over the past few months, and they recently announced that they were awarded $4.7 million from a new non-government Swiss international customer to provide vehicle-based counter drones. Uh, the end customer is a high profile government agency and payments are expected to be received throughout 2024 and the last payment in 2025. So their share price has done extremely well um, and hopefully more contracts to come. Finally, we'll mention one down stock today, which was RNX. Now RNX released um, IOCG brachia zone that was discovered at their Mongo's, Mongoose Deep's rare earths project. Oh, sorry, copper project. Um, let's just bring up the chart. So they've had quite a fall. This was their announcement. However, the same day they did release an update to that announcement that will be expected to hit the market next week. So I don't know what happened there, but it seems like they were missing something in their original announcement. Now the share price did fall massively that day. Um, and it is trading at those lows right now at 0.9 cents a share. So hopefully they can get the share price back up there and increase expectations for shareholders. That's it for the wrap this week. I hope you guys have a great weekend and see you next week. <laughs>